Hello everyone and welcome to Roadmap. Today's topic is Forest and Wildlife Resources Part 3 and if you like the video don't forget to click on thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe for more video updates and you can also give your suggestions in the comment section below. Topics to be covered are Introduction, Flora and Fauna in India, Causes of Depletion of Flora and Fauna, Conservation of Forest and Wildlife in India, Types and Distribution of Forest and Wildlife Resources, Community and Conservation. So coming to the introduction, uh, we have already covered with the flora and fauna of India and how rich it is in biodiversity, then its diverse forms and functions and richness. So what would I suggest you is that go back and check the part one and part two videos so that you will be able to link the concepts in more better way and you'll have a better conceptual understanding. Now coming to the uh, topic that are colonial forest policies to be blamed. Now, some of our environmental activists say that promotion of a few favored species in many parts of India has been carried through the ironically termed enrichment plantation, in which a single commercially valuable species was extensively planted and other species was eliminated. Now, for instance, teak monoculture has damaged the natural forest in South India and Chirpine plantations in the Himalayan Himalayas have replaced the Himalayan oak. Now the large scale development projects have also contributed significantly to the loss of forest. Now since 1951, over 5000 square kilometer of forest was cleared because of the river valley projects. Now clearing of forest is still continuing with projects because of the uh, projects like Narmada Sagar project in Madhya Pradesh which would inundate 40,000 hectares of forest. Now you can imagine the clearing of forest, how much rapidly it is taking and uh, the other activities like the mining, which is also important factor behind deforestation. The Bugza Tiger Reserve in West Bengal is seriously threatened by the ongoing dolo uh, dolomite mining. Now it has distributed the natural habitat of many species and blocked the migration route of several others including the great Indian elephant. Now many of the foresters and environmentalists hold the view that the greatest degrading factors behind the depletion of forest resources are grazing and fuel wood collection. Now there may be some substance in their argument but the fact remains that a substantial part of the fuel for the demand is met by looping rather than filling entire trees. Now the forests and ecosystems are repositories of some of uh, the country's most valuable forest products, minerals and other resources that meet the demands of the rapidly expanding industrial urban economy. These protected areas does mean different things to different people and therein lies the fertile ground for conflicts. So Himalayan you in trouble. From the figure you can see the Himalayan yew. Now, Himalayan yew is a medicinal plant which is found in various parts of Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh and it has got a chemical compound called taxol which is extracted from the bark, needles, twigs and roots of the tree and it has been successfully, uh, successfully used to treat some cancers. Now, the drug is now the biggest selling anti-cancer drug in the world and the species is under great threat due to over-exploitation. In the last one decade, thousands of trees have dried up in various parts of Himachal Pradesh and also Arunachal Pradesh. So you can imagine that because of the various causes, the our uh, resources are getting depleted, and the habitat destruction, hunting, poaching, overexploitation, environmental pollution, poisoning, and forest fires are the factors because of which it has led to decline in India's biodiversity. And other important causes of environmental destruction are unequal access, inequitable consumption of resources and different uh, sharing of responsibility for environmental well-being. Overpopulation is also one of the third world countries often cited cause of environmental degradation. Now an average American consumes 40 times more resources than an average Somalian. Now, the richest 5% of Indian society probably cause more ecological damage because of the amount they consume than the poorest, 25, which is 25%. And the former shares minimum responsibility for environmental well-being. 
so from all this we can um, we can conclude that who is consuming what from where and how much now uh, do you know that over half of india's natural forest are gone one third of its wetlands are drained out 70% of its surface water bodies are polluted 40% of its mangroves are wiped out and with continued hunting and trade of wild animals and commercially valuable plants thousands of plant and animal species are heading towards extinction so you can imagine the destruction of forest and wildlife which is taking place and it is not just a biological issue it is the biological loss which is strongly correlated with the loss of our cultural diversity such losses have increasingly marginalized and impoverished many indigenous and other forest dependent communities who directly depend on various components of forest and wildlife for food drink medicine culture and spirituality within the poor women are affected more than men in many of the societies women bear the major responsibility of collection of fuel fodder water and other basic subsistence needs as these resources are depleted now the drug drugery of women increases and sometimes they have to walk for more than 10 km to collect these resources and because of the causes uh, this cause it causes serious health problems for women and the negligence of home and children because of the increased hours of works have often led to serious social implications now the indirect impact of degradation such as severe drought or deforestation induced floods also hits the poor the hardest the poverty is the case in which is the direct outcome of environmental destruction and forest and wildlife are vital to the quality of life and environment in the subcontinent it is imperative to adapt to sound forest and wildlife conservation strategies now uh, there are some implementations which are already taken by the government and what exactly is conservation of forest and wildlife in india we will learn in the next slide so the conservation of forest and wildlife in india conservation is the background of rapid decline in wildlife and forestry has become essential but why do we need to conserve our forest and wildlife this must be a question arising to you right now the conservation preserves the ecological diversity and our life support systems water air and soil so it also perce uh, perceives the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding For example in agriculture we are still dependent on traditional crop varieties fisheries which are also dependent heavily on the maintenance of aquatic biodiversity now in the 1960s and 1970s conservationist demanded a national wildlife protection program so the indian wildlife protection act was implemented in 1972 with various provisions for protecting our habitats and all india list of protected species was also published now the thrust of the program was towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting giving legal protection to their habitats and restricting trade in wildlife now subsequently central and many state governments established national parks and wildlife sanctuaries about which you have already studied now the central government also announced several projects for protecting specific animals which were gravely threatened including the tiger the one on uh, rhinoceros the kashmir stag or the hangul and the three types of crocod uh, crocodiles which are freshwater crocodile saltwater crocodile and the gharial also the asiatic lion and many others most recently the indian elephant black buck and the great indian bustard and also the snow leopard have been given full or partial legal protection against hunting and trade throughout india so this is about the conservation of forest and wildlife in india coming to the project tiger tiger is one of the key wildlife species in the faunal web in 1973 the authorities released that the tiger population and had dwindled to 1827 from an estimated 15000 at the turn of the century so the major threats to tiger population are numerous such as poaching for trade shrinking habitat depletion of prey base species growing human population now the trade of tiger skins and the use of their bones in traditional medicines especially in the asian countries left the tiger population on the verge of extinction since india and nepal provide habitat to about 2/3 of the surviving tiger population in the world these two nations became prime targets for poaching and illegal trade so you can imagine the number which has reduced because of these activities 
Project Tiger, one of the well-publicized wildlife campaigns in the world, was launched in 1973. It showed success as the tiger population went up to 4,000 in 1985 and 4,334 in 1989. But in 1993, the population of the tiger again dropped to 3,600. Now, there were 39 tiger reserves in India covering an average area of uh, covering an area of 32,137.14 square kilometer. Now, tiger conservation has been viewed not only as an effort to save an endangered species, but with equal importance as a means of preserving biotypes of sizable magnitude. Now, Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand, Sundarban National Park in West Bengal, uh, Sariska Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan, Manas Tiger Reserve in Assam and Perrier Tiger Reserve in Kerala are some of the tiger reserves of India. So the conservation projects are now focusing on biodiversity rather than on a few of its components. Now there is uh, also a more intensive search for different conservation measures. Increasingly even insects are beginning to find a place in conservation planning. In the Notification and the Wildlife Act of 1980 and 86, with several hundred butterflies, moths, beetles and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species. In 1991, um, for the first time, plants were also added to the list, starting with the six species. So this is about the project tiger. So this is the quote which says that save our tiger, save our heritage. So it is very important to save our uh, our cultural diversity and it is important for us to conserve and take measures for the conservation of our species because uh, they are our resources and um, I hope that you are enjoying the video. Stay connected for more lessons to come and uh, thank you for watching.